Hi, my name is Van James. I'm a teaching artist from Hawaii, and I would like to introduce a series of painting videos, painting exercises for teachers who work with students in grades one through 12. Look for a separate video on supplies, the materials you'll need to start these lessons. And once you're prepared with that, let's get started. In the fifth grade of a Waldorf school, one traditionally teaches the children about the plants. One has a botany lesson. This is a good time to introduce a more precise way of painting a flower, painting a plant from root through leaf, to stem to blossom. After wetting our paper, if you look at my supplies video, we apply some crimson red to the top of the page and let it gradually fade out. We do the same at the bottom of the page. And then in the middle of the page, we take lemon yellow and just smooth on and bring it almost to the area of the crimson red. The element closest to the color white has this light quality. We then take the vermilion red, the red closest to the crimson, and bring that into the crimson and down slightly towards the yellow. And we can wash it up into the crimson. And then we can take the ultramarine blue and we'll bring that right over the crimson red at the bottom so that we make right away a violet. We take the pure ultramarine blue and bring it up towards the yellow. Now this painting can be done also as a veil painting, as a wet on dry picture. And this can be introduced as early as the fifth grade. Uh, here we're doing it as a wet on wet painting, but you can do it with the fifth graders as a wet on dry painting. Next we take the golden yellow and we bring that into the vermilion and bring it down into the yellow. Bring it so that it washes in and gently blends as a warmer yellow into that cooler yellow. We then also take the Prussian blue and as you can see we've got our full spectrum of six colors here. We take the Prussian blue and bring it in down into the ultramarine blue and wash it up into the lemon yellow. And of course you see right away that we get the spectrum of colors. And if you see a color is missing, for instance, the ultramarine has pretty much got washed out, that can be reintroduced a second time. This is our background of the elements. The violet is representing the mineral kingdom, the blue into the green, the water element, the yellow air, and then the warmth element, the fire element into the reds. We're then going to plant a seed. We're going to take the Prussian blue and down in the blue violet element, we're going to lay our seed. We show this to the children so that they just plant this little seed let the blue germinate here and then allow it to send a root or two down into the violet mineral realm of the picture. And at the same time, let a little sprout stream up. And only taking this a step at a time, pausing in between so that it isn't drawn, but it's painted. It's allowed to grow and we get this little sprout it stands up into the greenish area and even into the yellow. We can allow a leaf to form. We can choose a particular plant that we want the children to paint, whether it be a rose or a lily, or we could even go in the direction of painting an archetypal plant that has all different kinds of leaves, all different kinds of blossoms. Here we'll stay to one type of leaf, that as you can see is long and narrow. We'll let the, the stem grow higher and perhaps the roots getting their nourishment from below. 
grow a little more stable. The leaves get larger as they go towards the light into the yellow. They get a richer, greener color. Blossoming stems. And we let those rise up towards the light and the warmth. We can see just how much we want the leafing to take place. How high it can strive towards the light. And at a certain point, the stems begin to turn brown because of the heat of the red up above. And we see this color may need to change. One can take one's time in describing the different parts of the plant. Uh, generally, one would do that before the painting itself so that it's just a reminder as the children are painting. And as the stems come up towards forming a calyx, you can then determine whether it's time to change color and introduce a blossom color. Here in this case, we've taken a, a crimson red. And just let it start as a little bitty indication of the blossom. Let the color set just slightly and then bring it a little larger. One can even add some of that color that's on the brush, the brush to the seed and to the root element. And then one can continue to grow the blossoms even larger. But take it a step at a time so the children really experience the growth element the transformation, the maturing element that takes place in the plant. So if all the elements are there in balance, the earth element and the mineral, the water element, air element, the light, if all of these can play in to the children's painting, they'll get not only an experience of color and form in an artistic way in their painting lesson, but they'll also see how this relates to the actual growth processes, the actual life that is in nature. And it's the best way to bring them into an ecological understanding of the world through the artistic activity. I hope you enjoyed this painting exercise and found some ideas for how you can develop your own further. Remember to not just observe them, but actually do the painting exercises because you learn so much more through the hand-eye intelligence that you gather from the work. Uh, if you want more resources, look into my book, Painting with Hand, Head and Heart. And keep painting. Aloha. Ahoy ho!